Well, hello, and welcome to the Wednesday night special. I'm glad you're here. You'll have to tell me in about 50 minutes if you were glad you were here. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about revival and faith. Uh, I truly believe there is coming a time shortly that if you are not aligned with God and exercise and just stop dismissing, well, that's my voice. No, when you start to hear things, if you're connected to God, that is the spirit. And there is coming a time where you will not survive if you don't have that as a constant companion. Revivals uh, and the Great Awakening, it doesn't happen in the churches. It usually happens in spite of the churches. And we are not fighting a battle with Republicans and Democrats or flesh and bone. We are fighting evil. We are fighting evil. So I want to talk to you about what you're up against and what your church is up against. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, I've had multiple people say to me, I don't understand why my, why, my, why my church isn't, you know, really taking a leadership role or a bigger stance on abortion. I, I don't know why they've gone silent on the LGBTQ push on religions or, or why they're cooperating with the, the government on things that are going to drastically change our church. They wonder why some churches seem to be adopting woke ideology and why there isn't a united front when it comes to the government and cracking down on things, even like, I don't know, closing down our church services. And why are pro-life activists being scooped up all over the country? You're gonna meet one of them tonight. I'm excited to talk to him, first time I've talked to him. The summer of rage. We had George Floyd, rioters, all over, given a hall pass. In fact, the vice president said, hey, here's where you can donate to help bail these people out. Do you remember that? Let's just call this for what it is. And then let's take a stand. Because we all know what these pro-life activists have in common, don't we? I'll bet you 99% of them are Christians, and I'll bet you 80% of them are Catholics. Of course, the government would never say that. But I want you to take a look at the people the government is now rounding up. People burned our cities to the ground. These people are facing 11 years in prison. I'm going to come back to these people later on in the show, but I, I want you to meet Eva Zastro. She's the daughter of one of the preachers that is now being prosecuted by Biden's DOJ. Look at how dangerous. Oh, no, she's not dangerous. Look how dangerous she is, right? Dangerous pro-life activists. Wow, at abortion clinics. Okay, watch. years old, I watched a video of The Hard Truth for the very first time, and God broke my heart about abortion. I've been in this battle on the streets since before I was even born, and I was raised in Operation Save America with this um, pro-life, let's love children, let's love God, let's end the killing all of my life. Okay, good. We got to send it. Send in the SWAT team for the love of Pete. Did you see how dangerous and crazy she is? I mean, she merely made no sense. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens Sunday morning, you know. You, you see that on the altar call. I mean, that sounds nice. Now compare that to the images of some of the recent left-wing protests. Where was the FBI and DJ, DOJ on all of this? Remember? Oh, Donald Trump, is, he's going he's gonna to come in marching with an army. The religion of social justice gets an automatic get out of jail free card. And if you don't think this is a religion, you're mistaken. And I'll show you a little later on in the program. True religion is a target. And in the process, we become demoralized. Don't let that happen. There's a Gallup poll out now. It's a year old, but it revealed Americans belonging to a church, a synagogue, a mosque, anything dropped to 47 percent. In 1999, this number was 70%. That decline should scare the crap out of you because we're fighting a spiritual war. You don't have to consider yourself a member of a church or religious. But if you do, 
you are now the minority in this nation. Why are some people experiencing things that feel off in their church? Why does society seem antagonistic towards religion? Why does the government appear to be part of all of these? Well, there's an answer to that question, and I wanted to zero in on it tonight. Because if they, we are a nation that doesn't have faith, and we are falling as quickly as we are into darkness and evil, well, I believe we'll be swept off the face of this land, and a nation that doesn't have a God, well, you're, you're less than nothing because evil perverts. It doesn't usually destroy. It perverts, and we'll be done. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you this chalkboard here. I don't know if you remember this chalkboard. It was how to demoralize and destroy the United States, and it was revealed by a KGB operative. He was a Soviet defector back in the early 80s. The linchpin for the entire thing was here, destroy religion. It was the first full frontal assault on the church to destroy America. Now, this is an ideology that was leased, uh, uh, unleashed on America by the Soviet Union. The leftists, wittingly or unwittingly, I don't know, spread it for decades. It is a virus that we never contained. We're being rotted from the inside out. Tell me. Give me the institution you trust. Give me one. Institution that you trust. If you said your church, you're lucky. A lot of people don't have a single example of something they go, oh no, I, I believe in this. I believe in this. Well, as Thomas Paine tried to get across to the uh, Parisians during the uh, Paris Revolution, uh, forget about your, relief, uh, your belief in religion. You guys are so far away from that. Why don't we just start with God? We cool with that. If we don't, we as Christians, as we are rotted from the inside out, we're being subverted and demoralized, which the KGB saw interchangeably as destruction. That's why they're attacking the church at the very top of the list. The creator of this chalkboard, KGB Defector, gave a really good analogy on why the church had to be first, main target, and has to be destroyed. And in his, uh, in his video that he did in 19, I don't know, 82 or 85, he wrote two times two equals four, okay? Now, are you gonna defend that? Are you gonna defend it with your life? Are you gonna stand in front of a wall and say, you have to come through me, shoot me? If you want to say this is not true, I mean, maybe there's a crazy mathematician out there, but not me, okay? But then, let me write a couple of words. These things are not true. You can't say them anymore. You can't talk about them. You can't teach them. You say that to me, you are going to have to come through me. And yeah, if that means my life, I am more than willing to give up my life for this. Not that. So are you willing to do that? Now, we'll all say yes, but probably about maybe a third of us would actually do it. But a third is better than any kind of science thing. This is why Christians are such a really critical, important target. This is why we're all currently under attack. We're harder to subvert. We're harder to demoralize because we have faith. You want to save the country? I don't know. The rising from the dead thing is a little harder than saving the country. I have faith. We stand in the middle of the fire with everything burning down around us, but we will stand. So, what do you do? Well, you have to take religion and take it apart. You take it apart with, you know, two times two equals four. You've heard it a million times over the last few years. It's the science. 
They're just science deniers. Listen to the science. Now, don't get me wrong. Science is really important. But there's a big difference in coming up with answers using the scientific method that gets you this. Watch. We commit to uprooting the legacy and perpetuation of structural violence deeply embedded within the healthcare system. We recognize inequities built by past and present traumas rooted in white supremacy, colonialism, the gender binary, ableism, and all forms of oppression. As we enter this profession with opportunity for growth, we commit to promoting a culture of anti-racism. I mean, you're a Hammond B3 organ away from, you know, some religion. Here they are, chanting in unison with a service leader standing behind a floral pulpit. What does it look like to you, really? Because to me, it kind of looks like some sort of social justice cult. But it's worse than that. These are medical students at the University of Minnesota pledging to, quote, honor all indigenous ways of healing that have been historically marginalized by Western medicine. Look, I think Western medicine has a lot of things that are good and a lot of things that are bad, and I'm willing to try any of it. But I have to swear an oath to that and swear an oath to white supremacy, colonialism, and the gender binary? I thought we were talking science. Science and social justice, they're different. They don't intersect, ever. I thought science was blind. I thought science was reason. I thought science was provable. What about pure analytical data? I don't want any of these people operating on me. And they probably wouldn't because I'm a white fat guy. It definitely was never meant to be something used in some sort of mock science math service. This is the new leftist religion, and they will wield that sword. Social justice is their doctrine. Remember, this, what we're experiencing right now, they tell you, follow, follow the science and the scientists. You can't. Look, here's how, here's how you destroy religion, okay? See if you recognize any of this. First thing is, oh, by the way, that's, uh, no, that's not Joe Biden. He has, there, some hair. Uh, first of all, destroy religion, you have media weaponized. The press has to be weaponized, directing everyone in one direction, and they'll hammer the narrative home again and again and again and again. This is what you talk about in cults. They, you call that brainwashing. Then number two, you have street activists. They attack churches and religious institutions. Do either of these seem like they're happening? Their narrative that they spew will echo the same narratives of the media. They also draw in government figureheads, legitimizing their actions out on the street. Wow, really? Hmm, have you seen that? Pastors, priests, faith leaders will be perverted. That's the third one. Doctrine will be changed. Left-wing politics will be preached from the pulpit. Have you seen those churches? Not only that, but immorality will be only discussed and praised within the walls of the church. And then finally, a full court press on religious freedom directly from the government. Well, let's see. Well, that's an FBI arrest. Seen that everywhere, and this is happening now, and this has been happening. All of this is underway right now. Faith, religion, and the church are under direct attack. Government moves in parallel. Those are the FBI arrests. That is not going after the street activists that have um, uh, tried to burn down abortion or pro-life centers. Okay? Government moves in parallel. This plan, part four, that's the final phase. Wake up, America. It is happening right now. I'll show you how it's happening when we come back. All right. Uh, in case you think that home title fraud is the only kind of thing that happens to other people, uh, yeah. 
Listen to this convicted thief explaining what happens after he forges your home's title and takes over as the new owner. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. Oh, no, I have title insurance for that. No, it's in my name. Or he would have to get some special document. They would call me. You know, what is calling you? After I've stolen the title, borrowed against it, or sold the property, or done whatever I've done with it, it's 60 to 90 days to even figure out that they're the victim of this crime. You know, by that point, you start getting foreclosure notices, and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house. Not only that, you don't even own your home anymore. It's not even in your name. This happens. Home title fraud is uh, growing two and a half times faster than credit card fraud. That's amazing. You can be a victim right now and you don't even know it. Here's how you protect yourself. Verify your home's title is still in your name, first of all. Just go to HomeTitleLock.com, use the promo code RADIO, then register your address for a no-obligation home title report. It's a $100 value. Again, you get it for free. HomeTitleLock.com, promo code RADIO. The media is absolutely targeting Christians, and the way they're doing it is by attributing doctrine to political activism. Christians believe in the sanctity of human life throughout all stages of human life. So naturally, the abortion issue is political for them, I guess. For Christians, it's doctrine. It's not political. It is it's what we firmly believe because we believe all men, all women, all people are created in the image of God. But if a Christian speaks out on abortion, they're a political activist. It's very clear in the Bible on the LGBTQ issue. It never says to hate. In fact, most Christians are told to love everyone, even people actively abusing them. But that doesn't mean you change the doctrine. That, that's, that's a political issue to some, but not for Christians. If Christians voice their doctrine on this issue, oh yeah, now they're political activists, then they're dangerous. So the media has spun this narrative. Uh, they're they're uh, ignoring Christian doctrine and instead declaring that Christians following their faith are now Christian nationalists. Just Google the term and see how media, many media articles are announcing this new threat to the American society. This is from the largest left-wing think tank in the country. Christian nationalism is single biggest threat to America's religious freedom. Wow. Here's a PBS uh, article with dire warning over Michael Flynn's terrifying army of God and the growing Christian nationalist movement. It's even down on our local news outlets, like this one here in Dallas. Christian nationalism is a threat to the America we love. Is it really? Have you even heard of Christian nationalism really firsthand in your church? I'm trying to wrap my head around it now. Uh, you know, how, how does Christian doctrine become so dangerous? Fret no more. Time Magazine explained it all in detail for us. They broke it down specifically to three big threats. Christian nationalism is anti-democratic. Wow, really? That's kind of news to me. I've never learned that in church. Um, are we anti-democratic because, I don't know, we, we go to Sunday school and... We don't have, like, you know, lap dances for the kids at that school. I mean, well, here's the example that they give on why this is true. They say we deny voter suppression, and that's a problem. Now, was that Proverbs or was that Psalms? I'm having a hard time remembering the scripture on that one. They say we believe it's too easy to vote in the U.S. Oh, I got it. I got it. This is Deuteronomy, right? No. They say we believe voter fraud is rampant and we support having to pass a civics test in order to vote. Now, it wouldn't be a bad idea, but I don't know a lot of white people that can do that either. I don't know a lot of people that can tell you anything about this country. Now, have you ever heard any of this at your church on Sunday morning? If you have, get out. Most probably... The answer is nope. But these are the things that the left really wants America to believe. Remember, you're in the minority now. They want everybody to believe that there's still, still some sort of voter suppression. And I'm sure there is. 
I'm sure there is on all different levels. But this isn't 1960 anymore. They want to push mass mail-in voting, and they definitely don't want people to know anything about how our government operates before they can vote. So what do they do? Well, they claim these things are Christian. They stigmatize the religious, then sit in their basements worried as hell uh, starts to boil over, uh, and they know that you will not be cowed. So they worry some more. So let's come up with number two. Uh, Christian nationalism uh, perpetuates racism. I'm not even going to dignify this with a reply. I'm not even going to mention how it was the church that actually helped end slavery, not just here, but all over the world. How the church helped bring down segregation. I know everybody likes to call him doctor, but he was Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And number three, Christian nationalism approves of political violence. Ah, yes, the famous 11th commandment that they've just caught us on, the one that Moses wrote in really bad handwriting on the back of that first tablet. So it's not quoted quite so much. A nice even number of 10, but you turn that tablet around. Thou shalt commit all the violence thou wanteth as long as itteth foreth politics. I'm curious, if Christian doctrine is so dangerous, why does the left support Raphael Warnock? I mean, he talks politics from the pulpit all the time. Why wasn't he labeled as a dangerous Christian nationalist? I wonder, could it be that his doctrine is radical left-wing politics and social justice and not really God? Maybe that's it. And that right there really is all you need to know about the new claims of Christian nationalism and the unseriousness, the complete lack of critical thinking in this country. With the media's arguments on this, man, we could be, we could be, we could all be killers. Or we could just all be people trying to be better people. The media is a clown show, but a clown show with a purpose. The media is now turning up the heat on Christian institutions all over the country. The Washington Post recently took aim at Catholic hospitals. The Post editor tweeted with this article, quote, Catholic health systems now control one in seven U.S. hospital beds, requiring religious doctrine to guide treatment, often to the surprise of patients. You know, I was just in a Catholic hospital. My kid was going to have his tonsils out, and they brought out the garlic and the daggers. They thought he might be a vampire. What do you what are you talking about? And if it's a Christian hospital, they have a right to say, no, we're not going to kill that baby. Imagine a Christian university or Christian institution operating their business that it it adheres to principles. Who to thunk it? News at 11. This must be some new phenomena for the Catholic Church, right? No, it's ridiculous. This is the staging point for a larger overall assault on church institutions. And I believe the Catholic Church is the first to get it. NBC News publicly outed, actually persecuted, a small Christian school for not giving in to the radical gender crap. And that's what it is. Crap. This stuff is everywhere. And it's only just the beginning. Notice from the media, it's clear here. They see us. They're determined to shut us down. And the street is listening. Which brings me to part two of the plan to destroy the church, the street soldiers. Now, no one in the Democratic Party had any issue with AOC joining Revolutionary Communist Party at a Supreme Court protest. This organization is a group that actively calls for revolution. She's fine. Now, to put this into perspective, This would be like if Donald Trump joined the Oath Keepers at a demonstration. Imagine the fallout, but with AOC, crickets. Radicals are being legitimized, and that has given away to a wave of attacks on Christian institutions and even churches. According to the think tank Religious Freedom Institute, since May 2020, May 2020, there have been 174 attacks just on Catholics. 
They include four incidents of assault, 26 incidents of arson, 66 incidents of destruction of property, 16 of theft, and 81 counts of graffiti. Now, the good news is the FBI is on that. I mean, as soon as they get rid of, you know, all these other people, but they're going to get to that. They haven't done anything. Where's the Department of Justice? Where's the stern warning from Merrick Garland? Where's the 11 years people who are just praying at an abortion clinic are now facing? And for anyone that says this is all about abortion and not attacking Christians directly, I want you to check this out, now deleted, a tweet from the group Ruth sent us. These are some of the people that they think may have done some of the bombings. Quote, stuff your rosaries and your weaponized prayer weaponized if you don't believe in god how could you weaponize a silent prayer what we will remain outraged after this weekend so keep praying we'll be burning the eucharist to show our disgust end quote nothing is sacred i can't seem to remember any action or statement on these groups you know like jane's revenge or ruth sent us i, I don't recall any highly publicized fbi raids and the people firebombing and dis and uh, defacing pro-life centers. No, 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 they're left to run wild. We have to increase our faith in what we know is true because before things get better, they're gonna get a little worse. Back in a minute. I'm so anxious to introduce you to uh, Paul Vaughn. He's a pro-life activist. He's a guy with 11 children that, you know, they took him out in cuffs. Wait till you meet this guy. Uh, if you're one of the millions of Americans who suffer every day from pain, listen up. We need you in the game. We need you. You know, this is no time to surrender and say, well, I'll let the other kids take care of it or whatever it is. If you're in any pain, I don't care what age you are, we need you. You're here for a reason, so get out of pain. I see testimonials every day of people who have tried Relief Factor and, and gotten their life back. I know it can happen because I'm out of pain. Ow! No, I'm kidding. Um, relief, relief Factor. Just try it, please. Just try it. 70% of the people who try it for three-week quick start, they go on to order more. Okay, that should tell you everything. It's 1995 for the quick start. Try it for three weeks. Really, try it, because we need you in the game. Get your life back with Relief Factor. The third wave in the attack on the church is to pervert priests, pastors, doctrine, to erode religion and people's faith in it from within. I asked you earlier in the show if you noticed anything weird going on in your church. We should be mindful of this. I don't think it's usually as blatant as this. Watch. One of the things I think is great about Miss Pentecost is she reminds us that we, we follow a God who calls us to not conform to things of this world, uh, that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And that means that what I think today may have to change tomorrow if I continue to renew my mind. And it's so cool that we serve a God that calls us to continue to grow and continue to, to change into something new. Uh, and to not be bound by the ways that the world mm. confines us sometimes, mm. that, that we're supposed to live differently. Um, Pastor, I'd just like to point out that's a complete perversion of anything God ever wrote down, said, any of it. Um, seems like you're kind of uh, conforming to the world now that it is popular and a new religion. Um, there are some things that are un changeable like chromosomes this is a united methodist pastor two children and a drag queen in a church the drag queen is ms pentecost oh that's funny she's touring churches all over the country i should say he is his real name is isaac simmons he is actually an official candidate to be ordained as a pastor and recently claimed that, quote, 
God is nothing, the Bible is nothing, and religion is nothing. In some churches now, blasphemy apparently is doctrine. And did you hear the blasphemy of that pastor in the church as he spoke to the kids? He said that Pentecost was so special because he represented what God calls us for. Quote, we do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Basically, truth, doctrine, means nothing. You can just be transformed into whatever you want. Just keep your mind open. If you go into any satanic church, I'm guessing you're going to hear almost word for word the same thing. And finally, after all this has been started, number four, the state moves against the church. It has been a slow but methodical assault on the church for years now. I guess we should have been paying more attention. When the Defense Department in 2013 under Obama showed us a slide that classified Catholics and evangelicals as extremists, we blew it off. Well, not all of us. COVID took it up to a next level. It opened up even more possibilities. In March 2020, eight members of the Love Life Christian Ministry were arrested in North Carolina for praying near an abortion clinic. All they were doing was praying near. It was only a few days ago that the city dropped the case over the First Amendment arguments from the group's lawyers. It took over two years for people to figure out that prayer used to be protected in this country. Check this out. Um, talk about a sign of things to get ready for. You probably know Dr. James Dobson, his organization Focus on the Family. Well, the group of House Democrats have called for the IRS to go after his evangelical group, the Family Research Council. Who's next? The DOJ and FBI. They're going to come knocking, breaking down doors. Who's next? Christian pro-life activist Mark Hawk. Is that how you say it, Ricky? Is it? Yeah, Mark Hawk. This guy was taken in for a freedom of access to clinic entrances. It's a FACE Act. And he was taken in for a violation a few weeks ago. Armed agents, FBI, descended on his home over a case that had been thrown out a year ago. The charge was thrown out, and it was thrown out as a separate charge. The FACE Act violation is new. So he wasn't charged with that. A year later, he was. Apparently, it was such a slam-dunk case that it took one year for the feds to figure everything out. Now, is this the beginning of something bigger to come? Well, apparently, yes. Because around the same time, 11 pro-life activists saw similar FBI raids. Guns drawn, everything. Over an incident back in March of 2021, over a year later. Check out the faces, I warn you, kids. These are scary faces. Some of these faces, well, there's 11 grandmas and grandpas. I mean, hardened criminals. Uh, the FBI came to see these people bearing the AR-15s, the same weapons the government thinks you don't have a right to have because they're weapons of war, but they're using them on grandmothers. Here's the FBI at the home of Paul Vaughn, one of those arrested. But if you're not going to let me, then I'll just... No, I want to know why you were banging on my door with a gun. All right, you're not going to tell me anything? So what do they, what do they do that warranted armed feds storming the castle? Check this quote out from the Daily Mail. Quote, the protest was peaceful. No one resisted arrest. Mount Juliet Police Captain Tyler Chandler said at the time there wasn't any force used. We didn't have to forcefully remove anyone. And then they began to pass out papers saying that they were already arrested. So it appears this group showed up today with the intent of being arrested by our depart department. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it d does appear that they did block uh, access to the clinic. But as per reports, it was not violent. And as soon as the police were called, they surrendered. The point was to get arrested. My God.
gosh, have we fallen so far away from Martin Luther King that this country doesn't even understand that anymore? And religious people are not protected under our so-called Bill of Rights? Some of us still believe in that Bill of Rights. So why did it take the, a year for the FBI to build a case? Why did they show up at the homes with weapons drawn? And why did this case coincide with another year-old case in another state from another Christian pro-life group? Is Biden and the DOJ trying to intimidate people? No. AOC and other House Democrats protested for abortion with the intent of getting arrested, which they eventually had to fake. Is the FBI planning on showing up at their doors with guns drawn? I doubt it. The Women's March kicked off what they called the Summer of Rage. The sign-up page on their website asked the question, quote, are you ready to throw down? Near the bottom of the page, it says the Women's March categorized the attendees on whether or not they are willing to be arrested. Is the FBI planning raids on them? No. Are they polishing their guns, refining their SWAT tactics to get ready? See, I was always under the impression that the left liked civil disobedience. But they don't like civil disobedience. They just like anarchy. When Christians practice peaceful civil disobedience, and that is suddenly taboo, we are not a constitutional republic anymore. There seems to be a clear indicator that the government has taken a coordinated next step. So what's next? And what does it look like when the FBI comes banging at your door? Well, I have to tell you, I've been thinking about this a lot. The, the Saturday after Christmas, we're doing, or after um, election, we're doing a special program just on this. We better know our rights and how to react if somebody comes knocking at our door. Paul Vaughn, one of the Christians arrested by Biden's FBI, tells us what he learned next. When you walk out the door in the morning and turn back to look at your house, what do you see? Shelter for your family, place that your friends come to, an emblem of your hard work and sacrifice, your family, someplace safe. Or do you just see a financial burden? Uh, mortgages uh, are getting hard to pay, especially if you have an adjustable mortgage. Um, the draining of your bank account from credit card bills, especially uh, high interest credit cards. Please consider refinancing right now. A consolidation loan is something that uh, can help so many people. You don't have to pay the 20% interest. Get it down to 5%. You can get out from underneath uh, and behind that eight ball. Give American Financing a call. They've been in the business of helping people just like you get firmer financial ground underneath their feet for over 20 years. I trust them, and so I think so will you. Make sure you call American Financing today. Do your own homework. A loan with them could literally change everything. And you could skip up to two mortgage payments and close in as little as 10 days. So here's their number. 800-906-2440 or go to AmericanFinancing.net. Joining me now is Paul Vaughn, one of the pro-life activists that was recently arrested by the FBI. I watched the video. It is, it's terrifying. Uh, he is accompanied by his lawyer, Steve Crampton, an attorney with the Thomas More Society. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you both of uh, you for uh, joining me. Um, Paul, let me, let me start with you. Did you know this was coming, and what happened when you heard the knock or the pounding on the door? Tell me the story. Yeah, no, no foreknowledge at all. Uh, we had no idea uh, this was coming. Uh, in fact, at the the event in question, you know, after the fact, uh, looking back at it, I wasn't erected, arrested or charged with anything even at that event. So this was completely out of the blue. We're uh, like every American family across the, the nation on Wednesday morning, getting up, getting ready to take kids to school and getting ready to start the day with the business meeting and uh, send the kids out to get in the car, about to follow them. And I hear a loud banging on my front porch windows. Uh, FBI, open up. And that's how the day started, and it, it went downhill from there. And, and uh, uh, that must have been shocking. How many guys were there? Did they have guns drawn? 
Yeah, so the curtains were closed. So all I heard was FBI open up. As I'm processing and looking out the window to my car, I see the flashing lights in an unmarked car. Uh, I went to the door, and, and as they, they pounded on the door next, so, so once on the window, once on the doors, banging and yelling. I drew the curtains back to see who was out there, and they had guns trained on the door at that point when I opened the door and asked what they wanted and, uh, and who they were looking for. And did they serve a warrant? They had no warrant. They did have a warrant in the car. So okay. after... So the decision, Glenn, it really came down to the one of safety for my children. My children, I found I out later, were being held by an armed guy with a long gun in the side yard, uh, being detained, and they were being kept from going into the house. So 12, uh, 14, and 18-year-old there. God, I, can't, I, can't even, uh, I can't even imagine what this does to your family. Um, sure. Not, not, good, not good things. So right. when they took you away... Uh, what did they, what did they ask you? What happened? Cause you were in the car for quite a while, if I remember right. Sure. So when I opened the door to surrender myself, thinking that would be the safest thing for everybody involved, I asked for identification. Uh, the one guy featured in the video that we really got sideways with my wife just pointed at the FBI Velcro badge and said, this is the identification. This is all you get. And, uh, that and so, you know, that's the gist of it. We, they put me in the car. Once I was in the car, they, you know, that situation was resolved. They kind of, the intensity calmed down immediately once I was in cuffs, and which was the goal, uh, I think, of, of everybody at that point. Yeah. And, uh, and once, uh, once they closed the door there, you see in the video, you know, they, he said, I'll, I'll show you the warrant here in a minute. And they gave me the warrant. So I knew on my ride to Nashville what happened. But you got to remember, Glenn, my, my wife, my children, None of my friends, none of my coworkers, none of my employees, none, not my sheriff, not my state representatives, nobody in the state of Tennessee knew where I was for six hours or why I was there. Unbelievable. Okay, I, uh, let me go to Steve. Let me ask you some legal questions here. First of all, uh, Steve, no identification, you know, doesn't show it just as a smart guy, um, uh, doesn't show the warrant when requested. I don't know what, it, what they have to do and what they don't have to do. Um, and then the local police nor the sheriff knew. Isn't the sheriff supposed to be notified if the FBI is operating in that county? Well, certainly uh, courtesy would suggest that, wouldn't it, Glenn? And it, as you point out, I mean, the procedure that they employed here. And remember, all of this is for an event, a peaceful event that took place a year and a half earlier. So there's no excuse for the conduct of the FBI in the way they carried out this. It was just a SWAT team raid, really. It's disgraceful conduct, makes me embarrassed to claim my American citizenship, and makes you wonder, what is the agenda being served by the uh, Biden regime and uh, Garland's Gestapo with these kinds of tactics? So, um, Paul, Tell me what happened a year ago at the um, at the clinic, at the abortion clinic. It's my understanding you guys did block it, but tell me what happened and what your specific involvement was. Sure. So, you know, Glenn, the bottom line is the, our, our biggest sin, our biggest crime, the, the reason they're so hot and mad at us is we carried Bibles instead of bricks. If we'd been carrying bricks, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. Uh, but what you what you can see, and there's tapes out there available, and this is the majority of their evidence, is our own tapes where we live streamed the event. We were singing hymns. We were praying. We were certainly engaging with the one or two folks that came in the hallway that could have been seeking abortion. Uh, and and that was our, our intent there was to save lives and to help give people information to, but you I, know, in a, in a crisis situation. I saw you guys, and you weren't blocking the hallway. You know, the cop walked down and politely just said, guys, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go. You, you can't do this in the hallway. But he was not obstructed from getting in. Um, and did you not already have kind of a pre-arrangement to be arrested? Did you not alert the police about this? We did not, Glenn. Okay. The, uh, so we, when the police showed up on scene... I took it upon myself. It wasn't planned or anything of, of that nature. I just saw he walked up. I knew there were folks that were willing to be arrested sitting at the door with us in the group. And so I went and to just interview with the police officers, kind of talk to them, let them know this was a peaceful group. 
and just kind of get a feel for what their plans were and see if I might be in an intermediate area, you know, between the protesters and the, and the police. And in fact, I spent a good deal of time with the lead negotiator and the police chief uh, that morning, uh, talking with them in the hallway and, and really had some, some good conversations. And, uh, I really think that attributed to the, the spirit of the event. Mm. It wasn't hostile. There was, there was one police officer that got sideways, shoved a couple of our guys, uh, that that was the only hostility of the day. So any, any charges about, you know, violence or hostility or anger, uh, was literally the, the one police officer against the protesters. So Steve, do, does the, I mean, cause they're, they're doing this for grandmothers. They're doing this all over now. Um, and I think I would like to know my, the thesis of tonight's show is Christians are being targeted, seriously targeted by our government and radicals. You agree with that thesis, I assume. I think that's absolutely yeah. true. Look at the history here. Look at their uh, process. They are arresting people for a two-year-old face uh, case in uh, Washington, D.C. They're throwing Mark Houck uh, to the wolves in Pennsylvania for an event that happened a year ago. This one, as we mentioned, is uh, a year and a half old. And by the way, coincidentally or not, what they did is release this indictment on the day that the president and the vice president were meeting with their so-called reproductive rights task mm. force uh, on the 100th day after the decision in the Dobbs case that overturned Roe. This is, I think, war on Christians. OK, so uh, do they have a case? Does the Department of Justice have a case? Yeah. Well, they have a case. Uh, we think we have very strong defenses. And frankly, Glenn, we believe that the FACE Act itself is unconstitutional. We look forward to an opportunity right. to prove that in court. Um, so, Paul, is this going to affect anybody? I mean, you know, I'm not standing, uh, standing in the way of, you know, two plus two equals five. And they put a gun to my head. You got it, five. But when it comes to life, Jesus and eternal principles, I hope that I'm the man that would stand up. Um, is this going to affect anybody who is standing up for life? Well, you know what, Glenn, this is a, a chief point, I think, of their intention is to stifle free speech, to really push back on Christians that are willing to speak out and speak the truth in love in the public sphere. And uh, but I think where they're miscalculating is what we see historically in the church. Right. Whenever there's persecution, whenever there's bully tyrants coming after the church, yep. the church rises to the occasion. And, you know, we speak truth. We speak um, truth in love, but we speak truth regardless. Uh, best of luck to both of you. Let us know if we can help. And Paul, just real quick, I've just got 10 seconds. How's your family, your kids? They're recovering well, Glenn. They're hanging in there. We're, we're working through the issues. Uh, it's certainly a traumatic event. We will keep them in our prayers. Thank you so much, both of you. Greatly appreciate it. Keep up the fight. America, that's the state of your world this Wednesday night special. From Dallas, good night, America.